Greetings Captain Skunship here, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to talk about War Thunder and the trouble they're having. And to put it blindly, this is the actual issue, or at least one of them. So on a site like for example my Steam library, War Thunder's advertising has failed them. Not War Thunder's, but player reviews, they have been player bombed. Look at this. Recent reviews, mostly negative. And if you scroll down, you look past this recommendation from my friend that was done back in 2021, it's a sea of red. Or at least the first page is a sea of red. That's called review bombing. And of course, a lot of people that might be curious about War Thunder and want to give it a go, when they see mostly negative, of recent reviews, they are, of course, less likely to go and try the game. So therefore, Gaijin has started to become a little bit desperate. So here we are on Gaijin's webpage. And there's two big new posts here. There's revising the economy that came out where they are sort of pulling back the latest changes that really put the cat amongst the pigeons. And then there is this one here that came out yesterday. And if you go in here and have a quick look, how progression and economy is built in free-to-play games and War Thunder in particular. So here their uh, creative director is trying to explain himself out of this terrible mess they got themselves into. He talks about player progression and he talks about things like in the start, well, you know, it's a difficult game, so it has to take time for people to progress from the lower rank vehicles up to the higher ranks, and that he is sort of correct. That does make some sense. How, on the other hand, they're quite happy to sell you premium planes at seventy dollars a piece, and you can get those straight off the off the bat. And uh, so, that doesn't quite. It doesn't quite work out in in my book that's not true because they don't mind that at all so i think that um, you know there's a problem here they're also spouting out about 80 percent have never paid a dime into the game well if you take away those people that just maybe try the game for a little bit and they don't like it and and so on then maybe you get to 80 percent but i think anybody that has played for a year or more, probably sooner or later, or at least played on a regular basis, will hit the paywall. And I think that they just need to be up and front about that. Of course, a game has to make some money. Developers need to eat. Investors have to have a fair share of money. But there has been a trend, I think, of recent, and maybe or it's something that built up gradually. I guess it's just a, a balloon that slowly, slowly became bigger and bigger until it kind of just burst. Things have become more tricky, even if you pay to play. And I think for the last six years, or certainly since they came out with the beta of the tanks, that's when I really started to engage heavily in War Thunder. I have had a premium account. And I have many premium vehicles, and I probably spent a lot more on the game than I should, but I don't have any big regrets because I think I have also got a lot of time out of it. So fair enough, it is what it is. I paid my money and I got some fun out of it. That's good. But if my fellow players are just getting into a situation where the game becomes untenable, there is a few things that happens. If we don't have enough players, then we can't dilute, for example, the battle rating and, and stuff like that because you need to have a certain amount of people playing in order for the game to work. So what people are saying is that it's almost impossible to make progression in this game. And maybe eight years ago or ten years ago people were more tolerant of progression. But eight and ten years ago there was also a lot less vehicles in the game. It's just a absolute fact that's a funny old picture here i don't quite know what that has to do with war thunder it was a lot easier to progress because there was less vehicles 
and there was less tech trees. And, and they have sort of built the whole argument of a gun that you just play one tech tree. I know very few people that only play one tech tree. It does happen, but most people will jump between different nations because they want to try different things and so on. They will see some of the friends they play with playing high tier tanks. So there's a real pressure to get people to invest in premium vehicles, to get over the first two, three, four ranks straight away so they can be more competitive. But just basically younger players don't want to play old shit. You know, they don't join War Thunder to play a World War I tank or a biplane. They want to play jets because that's what the game is selling them. They want to play the latest tanks because that's what the game is selling them. We know from Naval that they had a complete disaster in the start because, well, guess what? They did boats. Who wanted to play boat? Well, some people, of course. But a lot of people were sort of looking at it from World of Warship eyes and said, well, why do I want to play those midget boats for, you know? Here I got battleships and cruisers and all the rest of it. And I just don't have that in War Thunder. So War Thunder Naval failed for a long time. And it took him a real long time to look into what to do about War Thunder as a game. Now, the Naval that I have a specific interest in, it's the only place that people can seem to make reasonable money in the game right now. Unless you're a really good pilot or unless you're really good in your tanks. Silver lines are hard to come by. Whereas we now have the opposite problem in naval where we have all these spots running around. And they're trying to combat that to a degree. But again, they are extremely slow in doing something positive about it. And it has come to a point where, I mean, I lead a, a naval uh, squadron, that you can just see that people are just not playing naval as much as they used to before, just because there's so many bots in the game. It's just terrible. You get into any 5.0 and above game, and the bots are there all over the place. Now, I know there's a change coming in the next patch, where you can't just set your primary guns to auto. You know, basically now they won't, after the patch, they won't shoot. But you have kind of started to feed into people making cheats for the game. And that's really hard to stop. Had that not been the case and been nipped in the bot earlier, the likelihood it would have happened would have been less. So it's an own goal. You know, it's not paying attention. And then there's the paying attention to the player base. New players don't want to do the grind as much as maybe they did eight years ago. And as I said, there was less vehicles. These days, when there's new vehicles coming in, I think many people are looking at them, oh, and I have to research this vehicle as well before I can get on to the next rank. And actually, it becomes a bit of a chore rather than, oh, it's a good thing. And they're not very good at collapsing uh, tanks and so on in the tech tree. Maybe they shouldn't collapse them because they're nice to have, but they should make them easier to research. Is it, you know, they, I mean, I played the game for eight plus years and I by no means have everything. I really don't. I've got a lot of stuff to do, especially in, in the later or higher tier in some nations. Of course you do. And, and I don't mind that to a degree, but I do think that for a new player coming in, it's a very, very daunting task to get on with War Thunder. So if you're making the price of entry so hard, then that's not fun. Now, I think there's an element of, you know, try before you buy. And I think that, you know, up to rank four, five, you should be able to, if game economy is even the right thing to have in the game, because they don't seem to control it very well. But let's say up to rank four or five, is easy enough to get silver lines or whatever and, and, and progress with that. That's okay. But after that, it's allowed to be a little bit harder. And maybe that what you sort of entice people in to get some sort of premium. And maybe there should be multiple level of, of premium uh, in, in the game. Could be uh, an idea. I also think that 
players hate when they have done a positive action in the game. And I, by positive action, I mean you have gone and you have played the game. Then there should be a, a, some kind of reward for that. Or at the very least, you should not be penalized. So let's say that you have premium time and you have a game. So you spent half an hour playing battleships, let's say, and maybe you lost a couple of battleships. Well, that could potentially in the current situation get you minus hundred thousand silver lines you might make that in other in other games but it's really depressing that you spend that you just end up maybe with a little bit of research so i think that my suggestion is if you're on premium time you should be able to not make a loss and by that i mean if it goes negative for any reason, you know, after the repair cost and all the rest of it, you go on minus silver lines as a total. The game will just ignore that and say, okay, you earned zero, but you got a bit of research towards your next ship because at least you, you played. I think that would be fair and that would help. The other option they could do is to just say, right, well, we get up in, in the BRs. Um, you know, it takes longer to research. We will make the research for having premium time even higher. And we will just take research, you know, as it is now for the people that, that don't pay. That could be a possibility. So I, you know, it's still 400,000 points to get a top tank. And if you are not a premium player, well, it just takes you time to get up there. But if you're a premium player, maybe it's a times two or times three or times four, whatever, a higher number or multiplier in research points. So you get there quicker. That could be an idea. And you could maybe even take silver lines away altogether. A thing that I really personally hate about the game is the... Um, gamification with all the boosters and all the boxes and all the rest of it to me that is just it takes away from the core element of playing and i'd much rather have extra silver lines just for playing the game without having to think about us need to use that booster or that booster do this here do that there and click on that or, or play in generally a lot of shit that i don't want to play just in order to get a challenge done so i can and move on why is that such a thing? I don't understand that. I think there should be a way of, of untoggling that for some players because I would rather just play and have a good time in the vehicles that I want to play rather than to have to think about that I have to... I had to get adamant the other day. And so, yeah, I took a Churchill tank and I played that for 40 games. But I really didn't want to play the Churchill for 40 games. I think had I played it for five, I think that would that would have done. You know, I, I would rather go back to the jet that I was trying to uh, to spade. The guy can really need to rethink a lot. They need to have a good long think about what they have done. And they got themselves into this issue here. This is, you know, separately a few words about review bombing and the method of commu communication. Well, this is what you should have started your article about here, because this is your worry. The review bombing, the negative reviews, basically stop new players from coming in. And that directly hits your wallet. And that's why you're worried. You're for a long time not given too much time to the players and the feedback, or you just paid lip service. But when you start hitting your wallet, well, then all of a sudden, you know, you pay attention. So pay attention and rethink the system. It's not 2010 any longer. We moved on a decade. Make something constructive out of this. Use this as a real opportunity for something good for the players. Something we can all sign up to. Something that maybe gets us twice as many players as we currently have. That would be lovely. Then maybe we also would have more real players playing naval it is quite a nice game mode when you get into it i appreciate not for everyone but it certainly has its merit but it should be done in an element of having fun having a good time and you know we all need to exist and just because i happen to have you know earned my my money during my years in uh, at hard work you know i like to pay towards a game of course i do but i don't want to be taken for a fool either 
And also, likewise, I think there should be a need for people to have the complete free-to-play experience. But again, at some point, I think that people should play a little bit towards the way and saying, actually, you know what, it is fair to, to pay something towards uh, this game. And sometimes that has to be more by stick than by, uh, by just goodwill. Um, so there has to be a balance and the balance so far has gone completely the wrong way. All the challenges like the dailies and so on, it now takes longer to do. And why? I, I don't know. It's probably because there is some kind of economy problem. Oh yeah, basically there is. And they keep putting silly things in that entice people to spend a lot of silver lines, like all the boxes and stuff like that. Again, that is gambling. So you're moving away from a game that is, should be focused on the you know, P2P, uh, PvP element of things, and you're moving into a gambling game. And I don't want a gambling game. I want a fun war game to play. I think that's what all the players want. And I think Gaiden would be so much better if they paid real attention to all the posts on Reddit, all the posts on the forums, and actually thought, no, we're going to make some real changes here. And you're still going to make money. There's no doubt about that. But you have to change your way. That's all for today. Hope you have a good one.